This is InfoSec Decoder number 85, like really smart. And we're starting with Irvin, who has the solution for ransomware again. Yes, go to the corner and cry. That's the solution. Well, I was hoping you'd have a little better solution than that. No, no, there's no better solution. I got this one because I found it funny that there's people are still making these articles, trying to get folks to, to think beyond not uh, beyond the basics of, hey, use backups. But you know, there's always people who don't. And they're trying to, this article tries to lean people towards, hey, have something in place. Um, but yeah, the usual, the usual of InfoSec having a, a sign that says, we told you so, the end is here. So it's the same old stuff, right? Layers of defense, backups, disaster recovery, and a pile of Bitcoins. Yep, 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 yep. The same old, same old. Well, you know, cloud, last week we talked about Cloudflare will now sell you insurance. And they will require you to upgrade your security to get the insurance. And so maybe that will help guide people to a better posture. Or so we hope. Yep. All right. Well, next one I got, I thought this was, I didn't know this a few months ago, somebody sent a run red, uh, rogue drone to threaten the Pope, or at least they were worried it was going to threaten the Pope and defend took it down. I didn't know about this. this is a commercial company. They got an exciting video on their website. Defend will take down rogue drones. And they said, some people would try to take down drones by shooting them down or by sending a drone against them. But what Defend does, or by jamming the radio frequencies, but all those are bad because um, they might endanger people. Defend will hack into the drone, take over its piloting, and steer it safely to a landing zone and land it there, locking the original people out. So they have like a, a, self, a, a stick with like cell, fi antenna, cell power antennas on it and a computer hooked up to it. And they claim they can just take over the drone by hacking it. And they do this commercially to protect like public events, which sounds like a great idea. Although you wonder if they just upgrade their drone, then they won't be able to hack it anymore. But anyway. I mean, a lot of drones use those ESP chips for their Wi-Fi communication. And that's how they're controlled remotely. So, you know, there's only so much you can do to, to, protect, to protect those stupid little chips. But... Um, there are more expensive drones out there that use custom modems uh, that use uh, spread spectrum, you know, frequency um, uh, communication with the, with the base receiver um, and the base hardware. That I don't know how you would how you would hack into that. But in other words, we're we're going to we're going into a drones arm race. Oh, I think we've been in one for a while since the U.S. has been killing people with drones. Everybody else is getting them too. I've been I've been wondering why anybody prominent is alive because it would be so easy to kill them with a drone and uh this sounds great to me and it occurs to me their business model is not that different than like celebrate where they promise to just keep hacking everything so they will have an exploit available for everything that's currently on the market and therefore have a high probability of taking down the drone sounds like a great idea mm -hmm. unless you can afford a you know forty thousand dollar drone in which case you're sol well uh, that would be an issue, but like every all, like every aspect of security, it only goes so far. Um, but apparently, it was enough to protect the Pope. And I don't know how big of a target the Pope is, but I would be surprised if presidents aren't getting killed this way and everything else. I mean, anyway. Um, and Intel has decided to save money by manufacturing hardware and then disabling features in software with a license key. So they can make the same chip and sell the cheap product and the expensive product. And they'll have the same hardware. The only difference is the expensive product will have all the features and the cheap so, product will have a bunch of the lock behind DRM. That's, that's basically Tesla's model. Yes, yes. And now, but see now, because Intel wants to support Linux, they're putting code in the Linux kernel to enforce their DRM. And it has secret keys that the Linux maintainers can't know about. And people are saying, I don't think Linux is going to put up with that. I don't think Linus is going to put up with that. Yeah, he hasn't said anything about this yet. Apparently not, but I highly doubt that Linus is going to say anything polite or nice about this. I mean, anyway, they're trying to enforce like that kind of DRM through Linux. And I'm sure there will be more fireworks coming from that. That hasn't made it out to public, right? 
No, no, they proposed it. Oh, you have okay. to get through Linus before it goes out. And I right. really don't think Linus is going to go for this. <laughs> All right. And uh, Caitlin has discovered that we aren't very smart. No, we're not. Uh, so uh, in, in a um, study that, that should surprise no one who actually knows people in these fields, uh, brain surgeons and rocket scientists are not smarter than the rest of us. This is according to a um, article in The Guardian um, or reported in The Guardian uh, by uh, Nicola Davis. And so she writes about this uh, article, uh, not sorry, she writes about this study done on, let's see, 329 aerospace engineers and 72 neurosurgeons. And they used the Great British Intelligence Tests from the uh, Cognitron platform, which, by the way, is one of my evil <laughs> machines that I used to take over the world, the Cognitron. Um, and uh, it, it turns out that people in these fields really aren't that much more intelligent than, than the rest of us. So the, the old saying, it's not rocket science. Well, rocket science isn't that hard that you have to be like a brilliant mathematician to get. Anyone can do it. Okay, just, you know, just takes time and effort. Same with neurosurgery. Uh, the, although the pressures of the jobs do somewhat affect intelligence. So they did find that the neurosurgeons are very quick to react, which you would expect if you're a surgeon and you have to kind of do things really quickly and react to situations as fast as possible. Yes, um, neuros because neurosurgeons are in that environment, they are a little bit quicker to react, but otherwise, you know, there's really not much of a difference. So. All right. Well, I'm certainly more educated, but uh, they are they are fairly educated. Now, what always got me is, uh, you know, the first thing you do when you learn in your first thing you learn in physics class is rockets, because that, that's, you know, Newton's laws distilled so simply. You know? And um, and then you realize that rocket science isn't that hard. Um, now, now the details, of course, get get very, you know, difficult. Like you, you have to understand a lot of things about aerodynamics and chaotic systems in order to make sure that the rocket goes up. But even the aerospace engineers and just and even the aerospace engineers don't have that all memorized. You know, that's all you know, computational models and stuff they just throw in a computer. And you know, one person. It's like cryptography for us in the infosec field. None of us are good enough to come up with our own cryptographic system, but we, we know the names, we know roughly how to throw it together and someone else has done the hard work for us. So we just use it, so. Yeah, yeah. All right. And Irvin has this Apache vulnerability sheet. Did anybody hear about this? There's an Apache phone? Um, no, I haven't, what, what's going on with Apache? It's a, uh... There is apparently a little vulnerability that when it's written, when something is written to a log, it will do an, a remote code execution. Yeah, it's a 10, huh? It's a 10. And yet it doesn't have a logo or t-shirt or a theme song or anything. I guess it doesn't need all that. Well, I think it does need all that. But it I, is. I, I, think, I think the same theme song should be canyon.mid. That can be in dot mid. Canyon dot mid. Yep. I don't know what it is anyway. <laughs> so win Windows, um, like ninety five, and may I think maybe if it goes back to Windows three point one, came with um this MIDI file called Canyon dot mid. Oh. And it sounded like a like it, I I would describe it as the sitcom theme song for <laughs> Windows. Oh. Well, that sounds good. Yeah, yeah. I didn't think it would make a good theme song for Log4j, so. Well, good. Yes, I think everybody says they're working like crazy on Log4j, but, you know, um, it's kind of like Y2K. I, the articles I saw that were most helpful told end users, you know, end users, there's nothing you can do. You're just waiting right. for everybody else to patch it. Yeah, well, because it's not on the end user. It's it's on the whatever infrastructure is using that logging. In yeah, Java. well. I bet a lot of end user things are using Java too, like probably Android. They've probably got a version on the end user too, but but that's then again, again, there's nothing you're going to do but wait for somebody to put out a patch. Yeah, I found it funny that PFSense put out a tweet saying we're not affected by this. We don't use Java. Who is it? Uh, PFSense. PFSense. Oh, that's good. Yeah, 
I know Cloudflare is affected and they patched their stuff and they added uh, security to, to protect their customers to some extent. So everybody is uh, deploying defenses and everybody on Twitter is posting new workarounds to those defenses. So it's the usual chaos. Yeah, it's, it's been a fun weekend for all those affected. Yes. Anyway, um, so Denmark has cut the booster interval to four and a half months, which is certainly a good idea. I think in Israel, they showed significant waning after three months, but Denmark now has the fastest Omicron growth rate in the world. It is doubling every 1.6 days. And the, the numbers, if it keeps on like that, that's really bad. That, so uh, they're getting very excited about Omicron. Uh, it's not a big deal in America yet, but this is kind of like the famous quote from Trump when he said, well, there's only 15 cases. So what will happen is it'll dwindle to zero pretty soon. But that's probably not what's going to happen. <laughs> and uh, anyway, another great one with drones. This company claims they're going to sell drones and they're only for like good purposes. Um, Brink. But it turns a video came out showing that when Brink originally founded, the original purpose of the Brink drone was to mount tasers on the drone and go hunt down people trying to cross the border and tase them. And That's so wrong. It, it is really, um, you know, like for science fiction movies, where these things are hunting you down like uh, flies over your head and says, citizen, you littered on the sidewalk. You will now be clobbered with the death ray. Anyway, uh, so they're trying to say, yes, that's why we reformed after that. Now we only do nice, good things with our drones. Mm. And, and it should be noted, too, that, that border crossing, um, uh, undocumented border crossing is a misdemeanor akin to jaywalking. Is it? I didn't know that. Yes, under the law. Um, that's one of the big issues about why <laughs> it's so contentious uh, to... Um, to really focus on people crossing the border because it really isn't that big of a crime. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, it is technically illegal, but it's, you know, so is jaywalking. We've all jaywalked. Uh, but of course, all of it is fueled by uh, xenophobia and racism and general human terribleness. So. Yeah, I mean, I know in practice, um, that's how we get all the workers. <laughs> and I, I know until it seemed like until recently, the whole point of America was people were welcome to immigrate here. Well, I mean, there, there's always been a lot of racism, even even not just uh, among uh, people of color, uh, but also even among um, different European nationalities. Oh, yeah. uh, and that, that's what particularly makes the whole idea of whiteness really racist, because that was a a construct that came along later on to sort of unite uh, lighter skinned people against people of color. Before then, you know, people would sneer at the um, uh, at the Irish, you know, and mm -hmm. and stuff like that. But then the KKK decided that we sh that we should all get along. <laughs> yeah, and, and that and that's where the idea of sort of whiteness comes from, and and that's why it's racist. So yeah, it also erases a lot of people's histories. Uh, because, you know, uh, there's so many countries in the European area, uh, you know, you have, you know, Spain, which is totally different than like Eastern Europe, then which is totally different from like the Scandinavian countries in terms of culture and history. Uh, but when you, when you sort of clump everyone together as either, you know, Anglo-Saxon or <clears throat> um, Caucasian or white as the KKK would want, want to do, it sort of erases that history, which is, which is bad, which is which you don't want to do so anyway that's the history of yeah. that's my rant okay anyway <laughs> all right anyway it looks like the sea level rise is going to be much faster than expected there's a major antarctic ice shelf that should shatter within five years and so um, the sea level rise that people expected more like the end of this century is probably going to happen very soon and, five years not five days uh well they don't really know you could bet on it but anyway, all right. And uh, Caitlin has got the Space Force. The Space yeah. Force does something. Space Force is starting to starting to heat up. Uh, um, so Reuters has an article talking about the U.S. Space Force holding war games, so red teaming type events uh, against uh, sa against fake satellite networks. Uh, so this is already happening. Um, so the what's uh, can, who wrote this? Uh, so yeah, so this was an article written by Mike Stone. Thank you, Mike. And I mean, there's, there's, not, there's not a whole lot to go on other than, other than what I just said. So 
we're, we're just entering that phase now where satellite warfare, satellite cyber attacks, satellite you know, missile takedowns are so commonplace that we just have to maintain vigilance at all times against it. Um, this is the world we live in now. Um, that's why Space Force exists. And, you know, this is the way it is, I suppose. So. All right. And Irvin's got uh, Microsoft Teams. No, not the Microsoft uh, Teams. I'm no, thinking. no, no, not Microsoft Teams, the tool. No, Microsoft yeah. Teams up. Yeah. I fix it. They're giving the I fix it people all the official tools and stuff they need to fix Microsoft product. Isn't I fix I thought I fix it was already part of Microsoft. It's, there's some automatic fixing website anyway. I guess now they have the tools, the official tools to fix things like surfaces and other stuff. Microsoft hardware. Okay. Yeah, Microsoft hardware. This is a, a nice uh, nice blow to Apple. Cuz you know Apple doesn't want any of this. Well, they just did the same thing a few weeks ago. They they you know provide official Apple parts to third party people. Yeah, yeah, but giving all the tools and saying here now you can fix it and yeah. fix it properly with our stuff. Uh, well, I say hats off to to Microsoft. Yeah, you know I haven't heard a lot about third party Microsoft up device fixers. I wonder if Microsoft just doesn't have enough devices in the home compared to Apple because you hear about those everywhere. Oh, what else do they have other than the Surface? There's the oh, game platform, right? Oh, the Xbox. That's right. Those, there must be people preparing those, I guess. I can't think of anything else. They don't have any smart. Uh, uh, <laughs> Zune. Well, yeah, but who cares? I That's mean, dead. Those no, are it's just, not. Those that are just so dead. Away, even if they still work. Uh, uh, I just, you know, I think I think that's the whole point. Microsoft never really made it into like the home market. Yeah, no. Yes, they did. They they have Xboxes are popular. Xboxes are popular, yes. Yep, and the Surface laptops are fairly popular. They're, I mean, you know, as much as like an HP or... Yeah, but outside of those two, what else do they have? Like I said, the Zoom. <laughs> um, um, it's who uses a Zoom? Exactly. <laughs> Caitlin uses a Zoom and she's shy about it, perhaps. Uh-huh. Okay, I so what else? Uh, I can't think of any other Microsoft hardware. Microsoft Mice. Are Microsoft mice? Yeah. Oh, oh, and the Microsoft um, um, uh, joystick that they made a long time ago. They make computer accessories. Uh huh. Uh, uh, you mean the cheap ones you can get at Staples, and when they die, you just shrug and get another? Yeah, those. Really <laughs> important to repair. <laughs> yes. Yeah. All right. I I think it's getting silly. However, I was pleased to observe Toyota owners. Have to pay eight dollars a month now to just road start their car. Absolutely they not. They have to subscribe to it, even though they they when you get when you buy the car, you get like a three year free trial, the remote start feature, and then they turn it off. And I was pleased to realize that I'm a Toyota owner, and I have no problem like this because my Toyota is a '97, and it doesn't have any of these fancy features anyway. Um. By the way, why would I don't know who would use remote start except like in places where it's really cold out there. Anyway, um, and Apple, of course, has its air tags, which I didn't realize how cheap they were. You can get like four for a hundred bucks. And you know, people are putting them on everything, and now they're tracking like cars they shouldn't be and people they shouldn't be by slipping it in their bag and stuff. And so the iPhone will warn you. And now they came out with the Android app. They think Android users are gonna put this app on their phone just so they can detect if they're being stalked by air tags which I don't know if people will do that, but it's sort of nice that you have the option. <laughs> I, I think some people will. Uh, I think people who are fearing that they're being, uh, they're being stalked on would download that app just to find out if they do have an air tag nearby. Well, yeah, but I think the issue is most people don't fear it. They discover by surprise that somebody's stalking them. And yeah, I mean, if you prepare in advance, that would be fine, but most people I think are are, it pops up on their iPhone and they're like, why would somebody stalk me? An unthinkable thought. Anyway. Yeah. No, I think that's a good idea. Well, yeah, it's, it's a step in the right direction, I suppose. But I think what's really needed is it needs to do something that would be detected by default on the Android. Yeah. That's what yeah. would really warn people. Anyway, and uh, the other one I thought was amazing, this Michigan woman wanted to kill somebody. So she went on and Googled and found a website that will kill this guy for you. So she said, First thing she said is, gee, I'm surprised this isn't behind Tor. 
But anyway, will you kill this guy for me? And it is a fake website. This guy put it up just to catch people that want to kill people. And he has like a policy. He'll let you sign up on the site. He'll like give you like two days to cool down. And if you still want him to kill people, he'll turn you into the cops. And he's catching tons of people this way that just Google like hire an assassin, assassins are us, and believe the first one they find. You know, I haven't heard of any actual successful murders hired this way. I know the Silk Road guy tried to hire four people to kill people, and they were all FBI agents pretending to be assassins. As far as I know, you can't easily really get someone to kill someone for you. I mean, dead men tell no tales. Uh, that's true. That's true. But you would think some of them would go to prison to be here. But the, all I hear about are the people hiring someone online, and this doesn't come to a good ending. Anyway, um, all right. And so Caitlin thinks holograms are coming. It's the metaverse, huh? Apparently. So the BBC has an article written by Andrea Murad and uh, Will Smale talking about different hologram tech that seems to be popping up. Um, so the first type of hologram tech they talk about are these tubes that display a person's uh, body. So one person stands on a stage and gets uh, filmed. And then there's like a box or a tube or something. And then the person appears inside and can like sp speak to an audience. They don't go into details about how this works, but I highly suspect this is Pepper's ghost. Uh, for those at home that don't know what Pepper's ghost is, <clears throat> what you do is you take a piece of glass and you sort of slant it. And below the, the glass, you have a projector and you sort of project the image onto the glass. And it looks like, oh my gosh, a person is standing there. Um, this is what they use at, at Disneyland. It's actually very old technology, but if you remember a long time ago, they had Tupac on stage, you know, dancing as a hologram. That was Pepper's right. Ghost. Um, it's, it's, just a, it's a very old projection technique. Um, but they're saying, oh, this could be great for video conferencing, which is, you know, we're living this weird age where it used to be if you wanted to contact someone, you would call them. Um, and now what you would do is and then that got replaced by email uh so now you had a choice between email and calling and, and email became sort of the default and calling would be like an emergency and then we got texting so texting is informal communication uh email is semi-formal and then calling is super formal <laughs> um and then and now we have uh video calling and so we have these like various tiers of formality of communications and anything like a hologram call would be like on the top end tier. Like no one would, you'd have to get completely dressed up. And I mean, it would be ridiculous. Um, I don't think this is going anywhere except at like trade shows and. It sounds like the viewer must sounds like expensive. It is. It's expensive. I don't, I don't, even if they got the price down, even if they made it so you could buy like a little circle, you put on the ground and the rejection comes up. I, I don't see this becoming popular. It's just too formal of communication to be practical outside of very formal business environments. Uh, no one wants this. Um, but what people do want is the other type of, of a holography, which is uh, inside out holography, basically meaning you put on sort of like a VR headset that you can sort of see through. Uh, so you're not projecting the image outward, you're projecting the image into the eye. Right, like um, Google Glass. Like Google Glass, exactly. Uh, and so in particular, we're talking about the Microsoft HoloLens. And while it can do video conferencing and you, all the stuff that you would do with, with the previous technology, the, 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 what they're finding the most important uh, role that HoloLens has is in engineering. Uh, you can throw people in the same room or a virtual room and work on like an engineering issue together. Uh, so if there's, if you're working like on elevator repair, or if you're working on like um, aircraft repair, you can have engineers sort of holographically, you know, see what's going on and, and show up in, in the same area and like project what they're seeing and work together on these issues. And that seems practical. I mean, very niche. I mean, this is not coming to everyone's home. I don't see HoloLens becoming the next big thing, um, but it does at least have a practical application, even if it is niche. Uh, and that's good. Um, the only type of like true holograms I've ever seen, and they don't mention this in the article, uh, have to do with lasers. Um, basically, you, no, the lasers themselves do not produce the hologram. What the lasers do is they intersect and they heat up a point of air so that it becomes a plasma. And, that, and then of course the plasma gives off light and they do this really rapidly and they create dots 
of plasma, uh, you know, around the room. It's super dangerous and super awesome, <laughs> but like it really does create a 3D image. <laughs> Sounds like we create ozone and start fires and stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. oh yeah, it creates ozone fires. Oh my god, it's, it's like it's super dangerous, but it really does create a three D image. It's just little dots, and well, it looks yeah. really bad. But it's a real three D image in space using light, and I'm like, okay, that's a real hologram. <laughs> All right, okay. So, so you're not bullish on the metaverse just yet. You know, yeah. So the metaverse is not a hologram. That's VR, which is slightly different. So. Yep. Yeah, well, everyone seems to bet that we're all going to be doing that within a few years. Microsoft and uh, Facebook and everybody. If they can make the VR goggles super comfortable and lightweight, uh, like just a regular pair of glasses you put on, that also let you see through very easily so that you're not like walking around in the dark and bumping into things. I know, because people say you're going to exercise wearing this Oculus on your head, and then you're going to break your wrist ramming into the wall. Yes, Um and, and I know at least on my headset, there's like cameras built in and like the HoloLens can do VR, I suppose, and you can see through that. But, you know, you really need to be able to, if you, unless you create an environment specifically for VR and everyone gets a giant living room that's just empty for VR, um, yeah, you, you really need to, to have those that be able to switch and see, see through uh, at a moment's notice. Um, and they also need better body tracking, but... You know, they do those things and it will eventually come. Yeah, it could become popular. It's just not not there yet. It's too expensive and it's too bulky and too, it's awesome. If, if you're into it, I'd say get it now and play around with it because I, I always think it's good to get into, te into technology early uh, rather than wait until it's fully mature to start it. But, um, you know, it, it's not going to take over the, the planet at, at its current rate or its current stage, I should say. All right. Well, that's it for this one. And uh, the next one might be Saturday. We're not quite sure on the date of the next one yet. Farewell.